Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Welcome to this new episode of Schlappy Patching. <laughs> This one is a follow-up to the last one that was beat mix and a drum brain. Last time we've been using the 880 by System80 and its trigger interface to trigger sounds from that 808 inspired drum machine with a combination of the beat mix and the nibblers. Today we are going to do the same thing with my old Simon's SDS8 because I've always found that it was a great combo with the Schlappy system in order to give it a lot, a lot, <laughs> really a lot of bite and uh, saturation. So far I have one nibbler plugged into the bitmix in order to simply mute and unmute channels. The sound of the Simons is going through an ears for preamplification and then to the 100 grid I'm using the distorted output but it's actually not that much distorted so far. Yeah! Big snare! <laughs> Crunchy Tom Tom! Okay, so you might realize already that we have a problem. And that's one of the side effects of the triggering circuit of the SDS-8. It's supposed to work with pads, and the, those pads are sending triggers. But this, the nibblers, through the bitmix, are sending gates. Which is why the sound remain open during that time. I've made a video on my own channel about this, using actually the Schlappy system as well, much smaller at that time, but... Today I'm going to show you how to make triggers using the boundaries on top of sequencing the drums through the bitmix. So the first thing we want is the kick drum. We don't want it to be... We want something that's more like... So we are going before sending that output to the trigger input of the Simons. We are going to go through a boundary. Using the trigger input, everything at minimum, and using the output. We can play a little bit with the sensitivity, and now we can actually like play with the decay. There is quite a few things going on inside the 100 grid. Everything is getting squashed to death, which I like. This is the sound without too much distortion. Maybe 
let's go with this. We'll see later. Okay, so now let's take care of that snare, even though I like that it's long. Maybe I want it long, but not all the time. Same operation. So now, if I take an LFO, let's say, taking a square LFO from the tree body. I'm going to control the fall. So I have sometimes short ones, sometimes long ones. Because it leaves the gate, which is actually the envelope, open for a longer time. This one we want to trigger for sure. There's more boundary that you can't see. try to play with the intensity of that trigger as well. Instead of taking the output directly of the boundary, I'm going to send that output through its own VCA and control the VCA with a, let's say with an LFO. So I'm bored of that rhythm. So let's take the output of one of the other Nibbler and plug it to get some logic action going. Yeah, this is why it's always fun to work with the beat mix and its logic switches. want to trigger as well. This one I'm going to send it to NLFO. the bound input. Yeah, let's try 
try to add as a final element something melodic to this. I don't have any VCA left, so I'm going to use the angle grinder as a low pass filter in a kind of VCA mode. I'm going to use the step out of the bit mix. to mold some of the envelopes that are snappy enough and send them to the dual vector foil to mix them and then send that to control the angle grinder. weird but it's fun logic beat <laughs> Just for fun, now let's try to take the distorted output. I'm going to take the positive output of the first channel of the dual vector for to also modulate that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lots of weird stuff to do. Okay, I'll leave you on this. Bit mix and drum brains are fun. I think I'll cut it down here, but I will try to find another one that has a few quirks that can be used. See you next time. Bye bye.